Hi everyone, this is Aaron, and today we're going to do a budget smartphone comparison of the LG Vortex, Motorola Citrus, and LG Ally. So first let's talk about the specs of each phone. First we'll start with the LG Vortex, which is here. Um, this is a phone with a 600 megahertz processor in it. It's one of the newer LG Phones, and all of these phones uh, can be bought for next to nothing, if not for nothing, with a two-year contract from Verizon. They're all Verizon phones. They're all running a version of Android. Uh, so let's get into the specs. Like I said, this phone in particular has a 320 by 480 screen that's 3.2 inches across. It is capacitive touch, so uh, all of these screens are capacitive touch and it has like I said a 600 megahertz processor is running Android 2.2 or Froyo and also includes a 3.2 megapixel camera in the back um, overall it's pretty decent the construction is good it has a metal band around here and it also includes uh, some memory all of these phones can uh, contain a little bit of memory this one in particular uh, is capable of going up to 32 gigabytes with the correct SD card and it includes a 2 gigabyte SD and that's kind of blurry but uh, there you go so it's 2 gigabyte SD right there as you can see and uh, decent construction feels good has a rubbery back grip check out the full review for the whole phone if you want all those inf all that information uh, let's go ahead and move on to the Motorola Citrus so the Motorola Citrus is different than these phones in that it is a completely green phone. The packaging is recycled um, and it, it has a different feel to the phone as opposed to these. Uh, it, it's quite light uh, comparatively, at least it, it kind of feels that way and does not feel as well built as the other two phones. Uh, that's usually not the case for Motorola, but in this case it, it feels lighter, but that may be due to its highly recyclable components. So let's talk about the specs. It has a 240 by 320 uh, display, by which is 3 inches, so it's pretty much the smallest of the group here. Um, it is a capacitive touchscreen, like I mentioned before, and it is running Android 2.1, or Eclair, uh, this does have uh, expandable storage. The storage is underneath here, and let me go ahead and show you that. Now they all include limited storage. Uh, come on. They all include limited storage. And this back does come off. Oh, here we go. Come on. It comes off pretty difficult, but there we go. So the storage is right here. As you can see, this one is also 2 gigabytes. So that's that. As you can see, it does also have a camera. It is a 3 megapixel camera. And it includes a 528 megahertz processor. So uh, it's the slowest of the group as well. Uh, let's move on to the LG Ally. Now the Ally is a little bit different in that it has a full QWERTY keyboard. Uh, so obviously if you're looking for a full QWERTY keyboard, this is going to be the obvious choice over the other two. Um, it's a pretty nice keyboard, but it does add to the to the heft of it a little bit, but thickness wise, it's not too bad. It's, it's, it's a little bit thicker, but comparable. It's, it's not uh, ridiculous or anything like that. Um, the keys feel good. They have a nice click. They feel solid, and it's a pretty nice keyboard to use. Uh, let's talk about the specs a little bit. This phone has a 600 megahertz processor and in the screen department wins out as far as resolution with a 480 by 800 screen that's 3.2 inches across. It is also capacitive touch and has Android 2.1. Uh, now at the time of this you may have Froyo on there, uh, you may not. So uh, just wanted to give you the original specs of the phone. This also comes with a micro SD card on the, on the side which is 4 gigabytes and uh, has a nice picture button. Or a camera. So that's pretty much it. Again, I've done reviews of all of these phones, so if you want more detail, check those out. We're going to do the comparison next. We're going to first check out uh, boot up time and show you that. So we're going to boot the phones now, and it's going to be a little bit tricky to get them exactly the same, uh, but let's see where the button is here. So we've got the on off switch here, here, and on the top here. So maybe let's see if I can do it this way. 
It's going to be a little bit tricky, but let's see what we get here. Okay, we got these two on. There we go. So they're all booting up. Let's see what we get. The Ally looks like it's turning on a little bit faster than the rest. Again, 600 megahertz, 528. I believe I got that right. Uh, the Citrus is a little bit different in that it has these two buttons. This is for the phone. Uh, send, hang up. So you hit this, you go directly into the phone. So there's boot up time. You can see the Citrus is a little bit slower. It does have a smaller or slower processor. Uh, I must say, initially, screen-wise, the screen quality is much better on this screen just by resolution. It's fairly poor on the Citrus. The Citrus, you can kind of see, uh, it, I don't know, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit, but to all of them, and we'll do a little bit of a screen comparison here with them on. Let's go ahead and unlock them all and see if we can zoom in and get a screen resolution comparison here. So here's these two. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, uh, but let's see if we can zoom in any further. Alright, so that's about as good as we're going to get there. Let's go ahead and show you these two as well. The Citrus honestly leaves something to be desired in the screen department. It, it really does, and I apologize that light's right there. Alright, so there's the screens all side by side. Honestly, the Ally has the highest resolution screen, looks the best, and uh, is, is pretty nice. Now, let's go back to home. There we go. So let's bring this back out and talk a little bit more about the phones. So uh, we talked about build quality and specs. Let's go over to the overall speed or feel of the phone. So let's turn this on. Unlock. The speed of the LG Vortex, and can, uh, forgive me if I get these wrong, but it is pretty good. It feels really quick, responsive, especially for a budget smartphone. It really doesn't feel too last gen, even though it's got last gen specs as far as the processor goes. Everything moves pretty quickly. Uh, now, this is the only thing running, as I haven't opened any apps, but uh, let's open the browser to give you an idea because we're going to compare those next. So, here's the browser opening up. I'm not on Wi Fi yet. I figured I'd show you the browser on 3G and then Wi-Fi. So there's the phone itself. Let's do the same process on the Motorola Citrus. We'll uh, wake it up here and kind of scroll side to side. Now this has Motorola's blur interface on it. Looks a little bit different. You can go quickly between the two. No haptic feedback here. Haptic feedback on both of these phones. Let's go into the menu. Now I have to say this phone feels pretty sluggish. You can see it's choppy, just me moving it. Uh, let's go ahead and open the browser. There we go. Again, we're on 3G. Uh, I am kind of in a basement area of a lower half of a house, and I have two bars with this phone. Have uh, three bars with the Ally, and have uh, full strength with the Vortex. So. There we go, we're finally into the browser. And we'll go back home. Now let's do the same thing with the Ally. We're on, unlock. Oh, whoops, well, before we go in the browser, let's scroll. This is a more modern interface compared to the other two, I would say. Well, the Vortex is kind of up in the air with that, uh, but this is kind of uh, sort of what, like, what, what you would see on maybe like a Nexus One, something like that. But, or close. So there's that. Let's go into the app drawer. It has the, the, the Nexus one kind of scroll down, fold over, and there's haptic feedback, like I said before. We'll go back home. You can see that again. I kind of zoom in and out. It's really nice. Let's go into browser. Browser's up and running. We'll go back home. And uh, there you go as far as that goes. Let's go ahead and check out the web browsers themselves by browsing to uh, zolotech.com and it is cold here and I mention that because I have the fan or the heater kicking on in my house and I apologize if you can hear that but uh, gotta heat my house here so uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get the browsers up here 
and get them all running. There we go. So here's the browsers. Those are the default pages. Haven't changed them. Verizon, Verizon, Google. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Zolotech and we're going to navigate to that. What I'm going to do first though is I'm going to lower the lights so that we can see it a little bit better and then we'll be right back. Okay, so now that we have the lights lowered, uh, these are the default screen brightnesses, so I'm not going to change that because I kind of want you to see that. So let's go ahead and in the Ally, we'll go ahead and type Zolotech.com. Wow, oh, keep hitting zero. There we go. Let's rotate that back. And, well, yeah, there's the go button there. We can hit that. Let's go into the vortex and type. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention. Well, I'll show you that in a moment, actually. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Pretty small screen to type on for me, but. C-O-M. Okay, there's that one. Now, on this screen, we have swipe. Now, it's not going to recognize my site, but, yeah, it doesn't do a good job with that. But, once it learns things, it, it works pretty good. And it does have swipe, so, uh, by default, just so you know. Okay, so now we have these ready to go. Let's see what we can do as far as getting them all to go at the same time. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Okay. Ah, there we go. Well, that's a pretty poor comparison. <laughs> I didn't even get it with this one. Let's go back. And let's bring it up. Okay. So, we'll do this a little bit differently this time. Instead of hitting that tiny little go button. So it's loading. These are all on 3G, by the way. Uh, Wi-Fi is going to be similar. And as you can see, uh, or not see, it's pretty bright still. Uh, but as we can see, we've got my site loaded here. Let's go back. We'll go back. And we'll go back. And in here, we'll go and try this again. Okay. And here, we'll do the same. Okay, so now I should be able to hit these a little bit more accurately. Okay, there we go. They're all loading at the same time off 3G. You can see the uh, Vortex and Ally are doing pretty good. The, uh, the Vortex finished first, then the Ally and the Citrus is still loading. So once they're done, I'm going to show you the scroll, so we can do that here. You can see they're kind of scrolling. This one thinks I'm touching the zoom. Okay, so... Alright, so next we're going to compare the browsers, and I'll show you that in a second here. Let me just readjust the camera so you can see the screens a little bit better. Okay, so here's the screens. Hopefully you can see them pretty well. You can see this one's a little bit dark. It does scroll. I can pinch, but it's it's very choppy. Uh, let's check it out on the ally. Or the, yeah, the ally. I'm sorry, I keep confusing the two. Scroll is good. Pinch to zoom works well. Uh, on the Vortex, similar processor. Feels a little bit slower. You can see pinch to zoom is a little bit slower. There we go. Uh, but that's the browsers. I just wanted to give you a quick idea of, of what it's like on these phones for the browsers. So let's talk about battery life. Battery life is obviously a very important thing to most of us as we need it to last our day. And what you will get with the LG Vortex is a 1500 milliamp per hour battery, uh, which is good for almost eight hours of talk time, 7.5 to eight hours talk time, uh, and about 500 hours of standby time. So this will easily get you through your day. Uh, I found that it lasted a good day and then some in my use. 
and um, I think it's good as far as that goes. As far as the Motorola Citrus goes, you are going to get a little bit different spec out of that. And uh, the Citrus, although it is very green, comes with a smaller battery, which is 1150 milliamp hour and is good for six and a half or so uh, hours of talk time and 300 hours of standby. So it, it still should get you through your day, um, given that this phone is mostly pretty much a phone and then a smartphone, as far as the buttons suggest anyway, where you've got a button that opens your, your phone and one that hangs up. Uh, that's pretty much it for that phone. Now as far as the Ally goes, the Ally has or also has a 1500 milliamp per hour battery that is good for 7.5 or almost 8 hours talk time and 5 hours standby. Uh, you can pretty much assume that these both being LG phones, they both use pretty much the same battery. So uh, either way though, most of these phones, or I shouldn't say most, the phones will get you through a day. Uh, you are going to get a little bit better life out of these two phones just because of the battery size. But all phones as far as budget smartphones go and having smaller processors than the Droid X's and things like that and, large, and smaller screens will get you through the day without a problem. Um, let's talk a little bit about the cameras. The cameras are both 3.2 megapixels here but you have a flash on the Ally. I'm not going to go ahead and take images and show you all that. We can leave that for another review maybe later if you if you guys want to see that. But uh, they're both 3 megapixels or 3.2 megapixel cameras. The Ally does have a flash with it so if you want to take pictures in darker light you can do that. The camera on the uh, Citrus is a 3 megapixel which isn't that much lower but does not have a flash. Uh, overall, I think the phones uh, are decent, especially for budget. I would say, my own opinion, uh, use-wise, you do have Froyo right now on the Vortex, and you do have Android 2.2. However, if you want a QWERTY, uh, you may want to check out the Ally. Personally, unless you're someone that's really uh, very concerned about environmental concerns, uh, is even down to your smartphone and are willing to compromise for that experience with your smartphone, uh, that's the person I would suge suggest the Citrus to. Personally, I just can't recommend the Citrus over the rest of them. The lower screen resolution, the uh, smaller screen, the less battery life, the, slow, the slowness of it, personally just can't recommend it unless you really want something that's environmentally friendly uh, over the rest of your concerns. Now, between these two, uh, it's a pretty fair comparison. The screen resolution is nicer on the Ally, like we said, um, but this does have a QWERTY keyboard, backlit QWERTY keyboard, as I know some of you will probably ask. So, I really don't want to go into a ton of different things. I've done reviews on each of these, so if you're interested and want to see more detail on each, check those out. But I think as far as connecting... Or, I'm sorry, I'm reading this as I'm speaking to you. I think as far as... Um, suggesting one over the other. Between these two, you could go with either and it's a safe bet. I personally uh, like this with swipe built in Froyo right now and uh, the aesthetics of it I like a little bit better. Uh, I don't need the QWERTY keyboard but if you do and you want the higher screen resolution definitely check out the Ally. There are other budget smartphones out there um, but these are the three I actually have on on hand right now to compare. However if you'd like to see any more comparisons between the budget phones I'm always open to suggestions. I try to I try to accommodate what you want to see, as uh, and try and help you you have the best buying experience you can with these phones. So uh, again, thanks for subscribing. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm at the 2,000 mark now and, and growing every day. I really appreciate that. I couldn't couldn't keep doing this without all of you subscribers. So I appreciate that. And uh, continue to subscribe if you're not. And uh, thanks again. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.